Hey, welcome everyone. We expect a fast, fun, productive student to student session, innovation and collaboration for success. Please say hello to our amazing team right here, right now, around the world. Ciao, everybody. Oh, Good to see all of you. <laughs> we got great energy. You know, this session is about innovation and collaboration. Innovation starts with learning, curiosity, being interested versus trying to be interesting. And as you know, innovation is the fuel by infectious curiosity, creativity, and it's powered by passion. Passion will drive your performance and define your purpose. So innovation, I see it as a panacea of infinite and abundant possibilities to success. Collaboration is also one of our core values here at Enactus. It's a key to success because we can't do this alone. 2020 is a time to embrace each other and lift each other up, and more importantly than ever, to unite. In this world, there is no they, it is just us. And while we are here, live from Earth, we need to work together and pull it together. We have a lot to do. When it comes to Enactus, we know that competition can feel like the opposite of collaboration. But we're here to break such that notion. We're gonna break it wide open right here, right now and change that paradigm forever. So my challenge to you in the next 36 minutes or so is to arrive at three key points to define what does success look like? A challenge to lead change for a future forward of innovation and collaboration for success. And because this is a student to student session, I got a feeling that um, many adults may be listening in as well as some invited representatives from BuzzFeed, Real Leaders, Cheddar, CNBC in America, and a couple of podcasts uh, leaders, including Ryan. So I'm excited to get this session going, but ignore all of that noise out there. It's just us. Be you. Be perfectly you. Be perfectly impatient, unfiltered, courageous, next-gen leaders. It's time to reshape Enactus and the world for good. All right, so you have your challenge. You're gonna come up with three key points by the end of this call. We're gonna capture all of your comments in the thread. We're gonna use it as we help reshape and shape collaboration and consider innovation. So let's go. All right, there is a great team on this call. I'm seeing some beautiful people from all over the world. Thank you, Next Gen Leaders. Let's get it started. Here's Ambreen Khan. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. I am joined by some incredible students from Team Italy and Team Puerto Rico, as well as two correspondents. We have Mashika and Joseph, who will be helping me in fielding any questions, comments, thoughts that are coming from you, the audience. So be sure to share those with us today so we can address them. Uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, Vanika, who is joining us from India. And Vanika, I believe you have a challenge statement for us to kick us off on our discussion. So if you can share that with us first and then we'll, yes. we'll get started. Definitely. Thank you so much, Ambreen. Back then in college, when I first got to know about Enactus, it was the idea of head for the business and heart for the world that made me feel that Enactus is the place where I want to be. At that point of time, I had no idea what I was getting into. I had no idea what potential Enactus as an organization holds or what we are capable of doing as Enactus students. Exactly in 2019, when I was sitting in the second last row of my national convention, I remember seeing students my age impacting lives of people across borders, changing systems and creating impact with their innovative business ideas. And at that point of time, I realized that I wanted to check out the world. I wanted to see what students across the world are doing and I wanted to research about it. And when I did that, I was amazed. I fell in love with the vision and the idea of an actress and I just wanted to know more and more and more and more. And when I did that, I realized that Enactus is a hub of student and academic leaders from all across the globe who collaborate to create change, to create impact, to create a better and a sustainable world. But at that point of time, I had a question in my mind. And that question was that if 72,000 next-gen leaders in 36 countries are impacting the life of about 1.3 million plus people, then why? Why isn't the world a better place already? We are honest, we are passionate, we are collaborative, we are innovative. But what is it that we are lacking? What is something that is missing? I wanted to know the answer of where we are lacking. We were collaborating within our teams and with our external beneficiaries and communities to create real life impact. But there was something that, that we were missing. 
And when I was scroll scrolling through presentations of Canada, Dublin, and all of these places, I realized that Enact is Canada, Enact is Nigeria, Enact is Dublin. All of these people are trying to save, solve the same problems. They have their diversified passions, but working for the same thing. And at that point of time, I realized that maybe, maybe we were forgetting to collaborate together. Maybe we were forgetting to be one, unite and work together. At that point in time, I just imagined that what will happen if a World Cup winning project is taken up by teams across countries and different projects are taken up by teams different, in different countries? Will it be a big brand of the group then? What will happen if um, Inactis, um, Inactis U UAFPA shares their technology with Inactis India and Inactis Canada to implement that in their countries? Will, will, will it sustain if people uh, from different countries share the tech, uh, the tech their technology and expertise to increase impact. What will happen if Nigeria and India collaborate, collaborate together with their expertise and their passions to create something bigger? What will happen if we all are one? But at that point of time, a question that came to my mind was that if Inactus Kazakhstan and Inactus Israel collaborate, who will win the World Cup? Can there be two flags on the same stage? Can there, can, is there any identity of two people merging together to create impact? Who will win? Maybe competition in actus means impacting more lives every day, but are we impacting more lives every day? Because if we, if I believe that if we have an answer for this question, that in actus has the potential of impacting 7 billion people all across the globe and not just 1.3 million plus people in 113 countries. We can do more. We can be the next Microsoft, Amazon, or Apple of change. Just if, just like Steve Jobs, we try to collaborate our Apple with the Microsoft and be one for the world. Thank you, Monica. That was a powerful statement and an even more uh, incredible challenge that we're going to be tackling during this discussion. And as an Enactus alumni myself, I completely resonate with your challenge. I hope to see that every single year brings more innovative and impactful projects from students. And as you were speaking, I was reminded of the famous African proverb that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And I think in order to build enact this projects further, it's going to require that we go together and we collaborate. And so with that in mind of this purpose of this discussion, um, you know, I'd like to ask and reiterate Vanika's statement and challenge, how can we change the Enactus competition into a co-opetition? And this is to ultimately help us increase our collective impact through collaboration. And so I mentioned we have students from uh, Team Italy and Team Puerto Rico to help us, uh, you know, resolve this challenge. So I'd like to introduce Alice, Aaron, and Sara from Team Italy. Ciao. Ciao. And if we can first get you to share your 77 second film. Um, and I wanna preface this to the audience by saying that these two teams have built incredible projects in their respective countries. And we'll be able to see how there's a lot of opportunity for collaboration. So this is a perfect case study here. So if Team Italy, if you can share your film, uh, that'd be great. Sure. Most people love buying new clothes, but do you know where they come from and how they were made? In fact, the fashion industry is the world's second most polluting, releasing toxic chemicals and giving workers low wages for labor in unsafe conditions. Both the environment and people suffer immensely just so that we can look good. Enactus Unimi intends to turn the tide with Phoenix, a slow fashion solution to the fast fashion industry in three steps. First, we are partnering with young designers to make clothes from reused and recycled materials and those left over from industrial processes. Second, we are creating job opportunities for domestic violence survivors in fashion design and tailoring. Third, we aim to offer eco-consulting to established brands and to make a slow fashion level for quality and traceability standards. 
We are Phoenix from Enacta Sunimi. And we envision a sustainable, ethical, and green future for fashion. Will you join us? Thank you, Team Italy. Uh, so first, let's kick off this discussion um, by sharing if you could tell us how you collaborated within your own respective team, your partners, your and your stakeholders to make this project a success. So Team Italy, I hand it over to you. So basically this year has been a challenge as for everyone due to COVID-19 crisis. But at the same time, I have to say that we've been even more intense and uh, uh, more focused on what we wanted. Uh, and uh, we had more time to think uh, of what we really care about. So we even spent like um, a group of us spent even more time uh, than the past year. So um, I'll start saying that our group is very heterogeneous. We are come from uh, all different countries around the world. So it's amazing, it's truly amazing. And at the same time, it's, uh, well, slightly challenging just because you have to understand how people um, uh, react, people think, uh, which is part of collaboration as well as we are talking about collaboration. Um, so you get to learn a lot. Uh, about yourself, not only about the others. And um, we had to learn to collaborate uh, online. I think this has been the same for everyone. Uh, so like now, so which is very different by like doing by person. And so Aaron and I had to reinvent ourselves to be HR, uh, to uh, hire new people, to get involved, which we did in a very like, I didn't expect that great. So, so this is it more or less. And uh, regarding of what uh, Vanika said uh, about we have to collaborate uh, because with competition you can reach the target, but with collaboration you reach goals. Basically, uh, if you want to su summarize, I think we can uh, in a larger scale you can see what's happening now uh, with COVID uh, uh, or climate change. Uh, is uh, there are all issues. Uh, uh, which with an actus you aim to reach also, that cannot be reached uh, by only competition of uh, in an individual basis of single groups. So here I think it is a great challenge for future to, I don't know, uh, to work more together, to create more partnership between uh, the different groups in the world of an actus. I think it's gonna be great. Absolutely, absolutely. And Erin or Sarah, if you'd like to add on to Alice's uh, uh, response there. Well, I've joined Inactus one year later than them, but I suddenly felt um, part of a family. Unfortunately, we met just uh, the first semester because of COVID-19. Uh, but then, as uh, Alice was saying, uh, we managed to work uh, even harder. So I'm very glad uh, about that. And uh, we uh, made a partnership with uh, two young girls uh, from Iran. One is a consult fashion consultant and the other is a young designer. And uh, as uh, Vanika was saying, I think that we should collaborate more between uh, teams uh, from different countries. I don't know if uh, Aaron wants to add something else. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Uh, in addition, going on what Alicia said and also what Sarah said. So last year we were a relatively small team. This year we expanded a lot. We recruited a lot of new members. And our big challenge was how to uh, get everyone active in our team around our different projects. Because we added a second project this year, Phoenix, and it wasn't so uh, evident how to work together, especially after the COVID situation, everyone working online. So um, sometimes we would have to do everything with a Google document, or uh, if we were recording something, everyone record their own version and send it, and then we centralize it, put it together. So it was adapting to new technology, new uh, tools for collaboration. I think in some ways, maybe it was positive in that maybe we uh, were more intense as Alicia says, some people were working really almost around the clock on our project and maybe there's some positive of, of the situation. But I agree with what Sarah said, um, maybe we need to consider making new ways to collaborate uh, for projects that are in the same industry or in the same field. So I think also uh, the team from Puerto Rico has a project that 
pertains to a similar subject. So I'll let you segue into that, Ambreen. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. I'm, I'm grabbing that baton and running with it. Um, so Team Puerto Rico, hola, welcome, Ninoshka and Nashali. Um, if you could please share your 77 second film now at this time. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriela Alicea from the Enactus Puerto Rico team at the University of Puerto Rico in Maya West. We created projects to create a better world. There is over 70,000 next gen leaders like us working in over 17 countries to make the difference. Here is a 77 second look of our project Limitless. Our work's initiated here. Puerto Rico Industries for the Blind, a manufacturing nonprofit organization and social enterprise business that gives job opportunities to people with functional limitations so they can become independent. Did you know that about 15% of the world population lives with some form of disability? In Puerto Rico, almost 700,000 individuals have a functional limitation, more than half of them facing a level of poverty higher than the rest of the population. Limitless Project is working together to help Puerto Rico Industries for the Blind to develop a sustainable business, helping them to operate financially stable and give job opportunities to people with functional limitations. Over 25,000 volunteer hours dedicated to supporting the strategic vision of this company. 25 and active students are working together towards economic, social and environmental sustainability. In 2013, we worked alongside two individuals who created this company. Today, with over 357 people with functional disabilities that now have a decent job while supporting our island's social economic development, over $2.7 million in our economy. We can do more. Limitless is ready to escalate, replicate our model, and help others to be sustainable. The best project of Enactus are presented in Enactus Puerto Rico competition to be selected in Enactus World Cup. Our work changes many lives, including ours. Please visit us at enactus.org, the next gen leaders in creating a better world for us all. This is our call to action. There are over 30 Enactus projects in Puerto Rico, and you can help us to make the difference. Collaboration, competition, celebration, the key to creating a better, more sustainable world. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. That was sharing. inspiring. Thank you so much. See you all then. I'm going to, I'd like to remind the audience here that if you haven't yet voted for the 77 second uh, film competition, voting is still open for another seven more hours. So please do so. It's fun, fast and easy and ultimately fosters collaboration. Um, so just a friendly reminder there. Now, Team Puerto Rico, I'm actually gonna hand you over um, the first question that we received from the audience. If I can get uh, correspondent Mashika to share that first audience question with us for Team Puerto Rico, that would be great. Definitely, thank you, Amrin. We have a question from the audience here which says, as we have enacted leaders from various countries on the panel, can they share about how they were able to keep their teams active knowing that all those members have other interests and involvement as well. Awesome. Ninoshka, Nashali, take it away. Yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Nashali Ruiz from the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West. I'm glad to be here. Very excited about this session. Um, so to answer the question that was coming from the audience, first of all, our team compromises students from different disciplines. So it has allowed us to collaborate, contribute, and expand our knowledge and tackle the problems from different perspectives. We are, um, our core team or uh, most of our team members are from the business administration um, area of our campus, but that does, that does not limit ourselves to expand um, what an access is to other members or to other students in the campus. So I think that collaboration between students from different areas of the campus has allowed us to expand our knowledge and to everyone. 
and to provide them all the tools necessary for them to be able to create different projects, tackle different problems, or just to expand the ideas to another level. So yeah, I don't know if Ninoshka wants to add something else. Yes, also our team, since it's an interdisciplinary team, we ask our members what they need, what, um, what development do, do we can give them. So we create different workshops to empower our students in their type of areas of studies. Awesome, that's great to hear. And we know that you know our Enactus teams within our own uh, universities and colleges are diverse in itself. So it's great to hear how you incorporate that and everyone's ideas. Um, okay, Team Puerto Rico, I'm gonna stay on you here. I don't know if you've heard, but there's a global pandemic taking place and it's affected us all. So. And if you could share, you know, what your team has done during, you know, these turbulent times, how did you continue to collaborate and work through and navigate through these times um, to ensure your project was still uh, running and succeeding? As I always say, uh, COVID-19 definitely changed our routine for everyone around the globe. But it also brought many opportunities to do all those things we had an agenda for a long time ago. We couldn't do so because we were lacking time. We, we didn't have enough time to do it. So I think that because of this, um, and now um, being through this new virtual environment, we can still work in our projects. We can still establish collaborations, brainstorm as a team, get together virtually and do many other activities and, and tasks that we still have on our agenda and we can't stop because of COVID-19. So I think that COVID-19, yes, changed our routine, our lifestyle, but it also brought many opportunities. And I think that now, because of being through this new, new virtual environment, it's almost easier to establish a conversation between countries or between people that didn't have the time before um, just now, just through your phone or just through your computer, it's easier. You're just a click away to communicate with other people. So we're still in communication, we're still in collaboration, and we're still working on our projects, even though COVID-19. That's, uh, I Go wanted, ahead, uh, also I wanted to add that this COVID-19 um, made us stop our projects and rethink what we can do now. Um, so since always virtually, what we can do with the internet. So when one of our projects was stopped and we think, so what can we do now since we can go to visit our projects? So we created a new program that is totally virtual. It's an empowerment um, program to our community with functional limitations. So this made us um, create new opportunities for our communities. This is incredible to hear. And as entrepreneurs, you know, we're, we know, especially as a social entrepreneur, uh, to, to, ought to constantly stay uh, lean and be able to pivot and iterate depending on circumstances. And this actually leads into a, a, a good um, time for our next audience question that we have here. I'm gonna hand it to our correspondent, Joseph, uh, to share that audience question with you all. Well, thank you, Ebrin. Uh, so good to be here. Uh, wonderful projects on the two teams. So here's a question from our audience. And they are asking, I became a member of Enactus directly before the lockdowns and quarantine. So I have not met my team in person and I am not sure what to expect this virtual semester. Any word of advice for a new member who really wants to be a useful collaborative team member? So let's start off with um, maybe someone from Team Italy can share words uh, of advice for this can, student first. I can start if you want. Uh, well, in our experience, actually, um, our new team members that created like the uh, video that you just uh, saw uh, has been uh, uh, reserved during the pandemic. So it's all been like the work uh, during from the end of February. So the lockdown here in Italy, uh, well, until now. And uh, we looked at it by Facebook, uh, uh, university groups on Facebook uh, and so on. And uh, we asked for CV or, uh, and then we did uh, um, an interview online and honestly it was we had these two girls and it's been amazing I mean all the like of course the content the, the, like the job behind it we did but they created the video that in my opinion is amazing the one that we used for the national competition so it's possible it's definitely possible 
you need to dedicate time, of course, to select the people, to make them feel uh, welcomed, because of course it's much more difficult if you are not able to create a welcoming environment, like a real one, like when you go outside, oh, let's go to the coffee shop and write this for an artist, but well, it's different. But you can, like, we have a, like, um, a real experience that showed that it's possible and actually it worked very well. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think, uh, just to continue what Alicia said, I think the most important is to find out what people are interested in, how they want to contribute, uh, what are their competences, what are their strengths, and see how those can be put to use for the team. Um, another way of looking at it is look at what your team is lacking. If you see your team doesn't have a social media person or doesn't have a great, I don't know, strategy or marketing or find uh, what is a weakness and how can you perhaps help your team? If you see something that isn't looking great or doesn't sound great, you can always contribute, make an offer to your team leader and see uh, how they can help you feel more useful and uh, contributing to the team. Absolutely, and who knows, maybe another project will stem out of, you know, born out of this pandemic and it'll be completely remotely run uh, and still, you know, creating large impact. Um, Mashika, we have another audience question, I believe. So I'm gonna hand that to you to share. Thank you, Andre. Um, like we all know the unprecedented situation we are in. So this, this question says, what do you expect from the future? So let's start with uh, Team Puerto Rico. If you wanna take a, a hit on that question first. Yeah, sure. Well, what do you expect from the future? Currently um, as a team, we're working on what can we do next? What are the next steps? But in all of this plan that we're creating, we are planning on doing all, all of it virtually. So for the future, we think that um, we will continue being virtually, um, like communication between the Zoom, doing projects virtually with other countries, since it's more easier to do with the internet, with the technology, uh, since all is all virtually, we can work together um, in creating new projects in collaboration with other teams. Since it's not um, present, we can do it all in the internet. So let's let's dive into that a little bit further. So you know we just saw Project Phoenix and Project Limitless. We saw a little bit of overlap in terms of you know what these two projects were doing. Um, and I want to ask you know you all, how do you see your projects growing further in terms of from a lens of collaboration? How do you see, where do you see the opportunity for maybe taking your project to the next step by working uh, together with one another? So I'm going to open the floor um, for anyone to jump in on that question. Well, yeah, so I can start. Oh, well, that's fine. No, 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 please. No, go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that, of course, uh, um, we saw like uh, some, some aspect of the project stopped a bit, uh, especially during like the um, March, April. But at the same time, we had more time to plan. And as you mentioned, and bring like the creation of partnerships because it's something that you can really do uh, like uh, with the internet. So uh, the idea is to understand uh, um, better the direction of your mission and which partners, which networking you want to build uh, and uh, contacting and have an, a clear an idea of what you want to do. Like in our case, uh, we know they want to collaborate with women victims of violence. So we, we create a map of who we want to contact. And, um, and of course, uh, like our aim is to spread behind Milan, like to be as much as full as possible. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know if uh, my teammates want to add something. Or you, Nashali, please, you wanted to speak for me. No, it's fine. I think um, even though we have changed our lifestyle completely, I think that cannot stop um, doing partnerships or collaborations between teams around countries. Um, I think it's actually an opportunity to do so and between there's both teams, Puerto Rico and Italy. I think we we have both a lot of potential to do um, work together. Um, actually, we both work with the manufacturing textile um, um, product process. So I think it's just to, um, the importance is to establish 
all those conversations to do so and not just maintain or keep the idea in mind, but work on it. Like, let's do it. Like, when, when can we start? Not just have the idea or brainstorm about it. Just get work done. Exactly. I just want to add that perhaps an actus can provide a forum. Maybe uh, the different teams can be grouped based on the industry. So if it's working in fashion industry, uh, I'm sure there are many projects around the world, Puerto Rico and other countries that, uh, where people are working on the same type of project. Or it could be around the SDGs if it's a project focused on clean water or climate action or another SDG in particular maybe all those projects could be grouped together in a kind of working group or a conference call. I don't know exactly what the form would be, but I think it would be great uh, to have those people work together, collaborate, see uh, if they can pass along ideas and help each other. So Aaron, this is a, this is an awesome, um, awesome idea. Sorry. And, you know, we have people from all around from different fields, from different sectors and all around the world who are listening in. This is a good time to maybe ask the question on uh, Enactus. One of the biggest portions or, or parts that make Enactus what it is, is competition. And, you know, that's one way where we can help foster collaboration. But what are some other ways? What are some ways that maybe you have thought about if, if we're thinking about teams collaborating and Vanika, you brought this up, if two teams collaborate, if Team Puerto Rico and Italy are collaborating, do they stand on the world stage together? Do, are both their flags waving for first place? What, what does competition look like or what's another stream that can open up for Enactus to help you all foster collaborate, collaboration across the world? Well, maybe another category could be best collaborative project. I don't know, in, <laughs> in the World Cup, it could be like a parallel prize, the main prize for the best country, best project, but maybe another uh, category on the side. I don't know if anyone else wants to share. I know also Joseph wanted to say something, so. Yeah, like the 72nd film competition, it was mm -hmm. to see what our projects are doing. So we can create like a little competition about collaboration, how teams collaborate between each other uh, and doing a competition because in the past it was all about competition but now present in the future it's about um collaboration a collective impact how we work together to impact more people how can we work together to impact um new communities and to create new projects with a global mindset awesome does anyone else want to add on No, I just think that having a spot for like created by Nactus to share a new uh, like for future collaboration is a great idea what Harry just expressed and also knowing in case of uh, like uh, you will have this collaboration but also in just you know in a space to share information because they can be as much as important as uh, as anything else actually it's like the most important thing when you want to create a project so and uh, so I think it's good it could be a great opportunity, like has like the 77 theme has been. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Joseph. We're getting a, a bunch of audience questions in. Uh, Joseph, over to you. Okay, so um, what question the audience are asking is, how can we approach communities and obtain insights of their problems and challenges to develop new projects when there are still restrictions and more fear of resistance due to the pandemic? I think uh, Puerto Rico, if you guys could take that question. Well, thank you for the question. Um, I think that how can we um, look and reach to these people, specifically taking the necessary um, precautions to go to this community since we know that some people don't have the internet, don't have the technology necessary in the home. So how can we impact this community that we have already impact or we're going to impact that doesn't have this technology? So um, I think that is first thing is to um, take the precautions necessary to impact these people and look for research that uh, other university has done or to see what projects this this, the, the other um, teams have done uh, with this community and what has been the problem and to talk to the, to the other teams to see the insights of their projects and how can we impact um, the other communities. 
if anyone wants to add. Yeah, just that the new pandemic situation has created lots of challenges, but also lots of opportunities. For instance, in the fashion industry, a lot of clothing haven't been sold because uh, people don't want to go shopping they, or because of economic reasons, they don't have the means to shop anymore. So it's a whole new opportunity. Instead of throwing away all of these clothes that are not sold, let's find ways to recycle them. Let's find ways to use them in other industries or other ways. So I think uh, look at what's happening around you and how you can help your community. Definitely. And I think, sorry, Alice, you can go ahead. No, I just want to add that perhaps uh, it's uh, um, like it's different in each community. I just wanted to say like you have to understand the local environment, I guess, because in the thing of what um, it was said, like Michel uh, Scott, you were saying about the uh, um, the, the fact that many people may, might not have internet, internet access, it, it can be much more true in some countries, like in African countries, rather than well, in the Western world. So I think it's very different also in this sense. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Mashika. I think we have time for one more audience question before we have to wrap up. So if you can choose the best one that you've seen so far, now's your time. <laughs> Okay, so I think I found the one. So it says, based on your experience, what do you think will facilitate and maintain effective collaborations between teams? Go well, ahead. I, th I think uh, we can't just view Enactus as a competition. I mean, of course, there is a national competition, the World Cup. Uh, it's kind of framed in this uh, era, this uh, way of viewing as competition, but really we have to not forget our objective, that is to create projects for change, to uh, enact the SDGs, to um, help the world be a better place. And so where there's the opportunity for teams to work together, I think we should pursue it. And even within your country, maybe there are two teams that have a similar project or have a similar goal. How can one team help the other team? Of course, uh, maybe one team is going to win the national competition, but part of the credit can go to the other team or they can work together to realize the project. In the end, the goal isn't having a trophy. The goal is to make people's lives better and make the world a better place. And on that note, I want to bring back in Vanika here because you started us off by posing this challenge to us. And based on of what the teams have shared with us today, um, I, I want to turn it to you. How, what do you see that timeline look like for Enactus? What are you know, the top three key points of action we can use to help make this organization more collaborative? I guess um, the teams were great. The way they answered was amazing. One of the biggest problems is definitely the pandemic and coronavirus um, because it has just restricted the feeling of World Cup. Like we were all together, the flags, the videos are so embracing. Like I just want to be there. But uh, this time, I guess we are more in this pandemic, we are more, we are all more connected. So possibilities increase. As for the discussion, I guess the three points of action, action the first one being as Alan pointed out, how about we have a race for collaboration, race for one world, where teams, instead of teams, we, we participate as projects and maybe the judging criteria is worked around and we participate as projects, startups, it, it can be a kind of hackathon um, and the judging criteria could be worked out. Uh, the other and the most important point, again, as teams uh, pointed that there has to be a parallel shift in how we see in this. Is it just a competition? No, it isn't. Because our vision is to create a better and a sustain, more sustainable world. And it can only be possible if we work together, if we unite. The third point, as um, as we saw how team Puerto Rico and team Italy were talking to each other, it's based on team interaction. Like if teams interact like these, they talk about things, they talk about the vision of an actress, it just grows stronger and stronger and stronger. And maybe like teams should team should be encouraged uh, from the system uh, system side or in actress's side, and even if, like they can do it on their own voluntarily. They can interact with each other. They can have an actor's fest. They can have more inactors get together just, just to get to know each other. And the best part is that when I see coronavirus uh, limiting ourselves in our homes, in the four walls of our homes, I also see that today I'm able to connect to you through this World Cup only because of pandemic. 
I'm able to meet you all personally with all of these people just because of this pandemic. And so many people are watching us right now just because of the pandemic. Maybe if it wouldn't. Let's end off on that note before we get cut off, Monica. Thank you for sharing the top three points. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Anactis, you heard the students. Thank you. you heard what we need. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and have the, uh, a great time at the rest of the World Cup. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>